Will you join me in prayer, please? Supreme Architect of the universe, we invoke thy blessing at this time. May this meeting thus be conducted in peace and closed in harmony. Amen. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to uh, thank you for attending the Thursday, June 27th, 2013 public business meeting of the Allegheny County Commissioners. Gentlemen, is there any additions or deletions to our agenda? There is. We'd like to make a motion that we add uh, item 1A to our agenda. I'd like to make a motion that we add item 1A. And that is the Animal Shelter Foundation? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Brody, seconded by Commissioner Valentine, that we add <coughs> one item uh, to our agenda, item 1A, Animal Shelter. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to accept the minutes of our June 20th, 2013 public business meeting. So move. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Valentine, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> okay. Under the report of the president, um, we are honored to have Boy Scout Troop number 10 here. I'd like to welcome you, young men. You make us proud. And if um, we have a presentation that we would like to present to your troop. It's going to be a Allegheny County flag. We're going to explain what it is, and then there'll be a test. And so you all be ready for that, right? So you use part paper. <laughs> Gee, pens, Gee. Right? No? Okay. I'll give you a little hint. The one question will have to do with Commissioner McKay. Okay? Just keep that. If you can get that answer, you'll be right. All right. Gentlemen, will you join me? Now, we have made it a habit, young men. We'll, we'll call you up for a picture in just a second, but we're going to explain this all so you can see it. So, when the three of us got into office, we found an abundance of Allegheny County flags in my closet. And we thought it would be a great idea to get these out. So when we've visited our volunteer fire companies, or we've been visiting with our different towns and municipalities, and we saw that they did not have a flag, we made sure that we then made a presentation. We've actually been making presentations to organizations that um, promote the welfare of Allegheny County as well for if it has to do with employment, jobs, and such. So, I always start our, our presentation to talk about the year 1789. Now, a lot of you all would think that that's Commissioner Valentine's birthday. That's the year he was born. And, uh, but that's not true. So I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Valentine, who has been in Allegheny County a very, very long time, and to explain the whole... Can you guys see it? Okay. Okay. Uh, the date, 1789, is the birth date of Allegheny County. And then the black cross arrows here, you see, that uh, symbolizes uh, the needle on a compass pointing west because Allegheny County was the route west in the early days. Uh, we've got a shock of wheat here, which honors uh, our agricultural history here in Allegheny County. You've got the pick and shovel and the coal cars honoring our history as a coal mining region. This round figure here is a wheel or a tire honoring our transportation history and also is sort of like an aerial view of Commissioner McKay. If you look down on him, <laughs> that's what he's going to look like. Uh, we have the toll house here, which is also honoring our uh, transportation history. 
canal boat, which was transportation and, and commerce. Uh, of course, you see our smokestack industries, uh, the church steeples, which everybody sees the moment they come across Martin's Mountain, and of course in the mountains that do make us Mountain Maryland. So those are all the symbols that were put on our, our flag. Now, Commissioner Brody will talk to you about the importance of our natural resources. Some things that you may not know, but Commissioner Brody is a fifth generation coal miner in Allegheny and Garrett County. <clears throat> During the French and Indian War, when George Washington first came through our area, he noted and put in his diary that this county would have untold wealth due to its natural resources. And lo and behold, he was exactly right. Within a hundred years of such time, that is what really put Allegheny County on the map for its industry and its coal mining efforts. Such as how we got towns up along the George Creek area known as Ocean, because Ocean got its name derived because of the coal in the area it had such a high BTU, it was demanded all over the world for ocean liners. The British Royal Navy was actually one of the biggest producers of coal. The town Klondike, <clears throat> it, it was called Klondike because of, of such as the Klondike was considered with the gold rush, Klondike the little town was considered for the rush to mine coal. So that is what actually uh, brought us the, the railroad to Cumberland and brought us the canal to Cumberland. So it's been a rich part of our history from day one. And what can it do for the future? Well, it can fund us and, and take us into the future if we're allowed to do it. So. Okay. All right. Gentlemen, it would be my honor if you come on up here. We'd like to present you this flag. <clears throat> and then we're going to get a picture. So, Commissioner, why don't you step one step forward? We'll have them line up in the back, and then we'll step back. And Well, if we let you jump, that's exactly what we're going to do. Idea. Would you? All right. We're probably going to have to squeeze in here. It's a wide-angle camera, but that's the only way we can get me in. So. All right, I'm going to stand over here behind these guys. How about that? Why don't we take one without the lens cap? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Folder up. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, gentlemen, we're going to move right along into our action agenda. Uh, item number one is resolution 13-12. Now, this is a Tri-County Council revolving loan fund. And Mr. Matt Diaz, our Director of Economic and Community Development. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Thank you very much. Uh, the resolution you have in front of you, 13-12, uh, is the commissioners authorizing the Tri-County Council of Western Maryland to apply to Maryland DBED, the Department of Business and Economic Development, for a $250,000 grant to run the revolving loan fund. Um, DBED keeps money aside for each county in the state to operate revolving loan funds, and Garrett, Allegheny, and Washington County, through the Tri-County Council of Western Maryland, uh, runs that fund for the three western counties. Uh, this is pretty much just a piece of housekeeping to uh, basically let the commissioners give their permission to Tri-County to apply for these funds and continue to provide the small business assistance that it does. Uh, the, the revolving loan fund essentially is gap funding. It is usually second or third position, position loan money that falls under the bank lending um, and is uh, done at a low interest rate so folks can fill in the gap that maybe the bank or the owner's equity does not provide. Um, and. Uh, Basically what it is is just asking for your favorable approval of this resolution. But I would say one more thing that um, if you look in the, the county's strategic economic development plan, goal number five um, is 
dealing with small business development and, and promoting small business. And uh, because of the commissioner's leadership in the last three years, I think that's been moved as a priority for our department. Um, it is in our plan as a top priority. And moves like these actually encourage that. And I'm also pleased to announce that in, along with you approving this resolution tonight and what that will do in bringing a half million or a quarter million dollars to small business lending in the county, um, we've also entered into another agreement with Frostburg State University to allow their business counselor to stay with us um, into the foreseeable future through the Small Business Development Center. So coupling all those things together, I think, is uh, working towards achieving that goal that we've set, that the commissioners have asked for, and uh, making small business a priority in the county. So with all that, I ask for your favorable approval of the resolution. Gentlemen, I'd like to entertain a motion to accept resolution 13-12. Uh, Tri-County Council Revolving Loan Fund. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Brody, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, sir. Item number two. 1A. 1A. Thank you. Item number 1A is a... Who's speaking on that? Commissioner, Are you, Mr. Aberlin? If you don't mind. Please. Okay. The animal shelter. Yes. Uh, I had an opportunity this afternoon to speak to Barry Levin, who, um, who over the past several weeks has been working uh, with Bob Pay on the lease purchase agreement for properties associated with the current animal shelter off of Furnace Street and real estate uh, uh, close by. Um, the motion before you today um, um, essentially. Uh, is once again a lease purchase agreement with the Animal Shelter, Allegheny County Animal Shelter Management Foundation for facilities and lands associated with the existing shelter and the proposed new shelter subject to final staff review. Uh, Barry has seen the final lease agreement. It has been redlined with a few comments that he and Bob have. And um, Mr. Pay has been doing this on behalf of the foundation pro bono. Mm -hmm. uh, he certainly has other clients, and so uh, we hope to have the final document in our possession tomorrow for final review to compare with Barry's notes. Uh, but they're both, both very happy to be in this position today. Okay, so. wonderful. Gentlemen, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the president of the Board of County Commissioners to execute a lease purchase agreement with the Animal Con uh, County Animal Shelter Management Foundation for facilities and lands associated with the existing shelter building and the proposed new shelter subject to final staff review. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner McKay, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> now I can go to item number two. This is the Renew, Renew Con Med Agreement with the Allegheny County Detention Center and the Sheriff of Allegheny County, Mr. Sheriff Craig Robertson. Commissioners, uh, what this is is a uh, authorizes the county commissioners to renew the agreement with Con Med, uh, who provides medical service with the detention center. I believe the consumer price index for the past 12 months with uh, medical services uh, is a, it was at a, an increase of approximately 3.9%. ComEd had come to us with a request of a 2.5% increase, and we actually were able to negotiate that down to a 1.5% increase for medical services. So uh, I believe the, uh, the negotiation, I think we did well in that, and this would just allow us to uh, uh, renew that agreement with comment to provide our medical services at the detention facility. Okay. Commissioners, I believe, and Jason can confirm this, but the uh, dollar amounts proposed here this evening are consistent with the budget for 2014. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Gentlemen, I'd like to entertain a motion uh, for the renew the ConMed agreement with the Allegheny County Detention Center. So move. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Valentine, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank, Thank you, you Sheriff. Sheriff.
question that comes up. Okay. All right, gentlemen, item number three is the fiscal year 2013 budget amendments. Um, the newest father in the room, Mr. Jason Bennett, our director of finance. I'm, I'm sure it won't take long for you to be the newest father in the room. Are you making an announcement for I, me? I, I mean, no, it is I, possible. I just, I'm just guessing. <laughs> I think he's, he's challenging you. <laughs> I think he's wanting to get into uh, a race on I'm not <laughs> competing. I, I will say that. I'm not competing. Uh, that's not what I hear. So. <laughs> I'm going to talk about budget amendments now because they're cheaper than uh, more children. <laughs> uh, what you have in front of you is uh, 13 budget amendments for fiscal year 13. Uh, every year as we do the budget, we always have budget amendments, things we either didn't know about as we were doing our budget or things that changed through the year. These simply will reflect some of the changes. Uh, I'm not going to go through all 13, just in essence of time. You have the list in front of you. Um, some of the bigger things in there, though, we are reallocating $500,000 um, from previous debt service to PEGO as a result of a refinancing. Um, so we're going to be able to use that for the sheriff's building. Uh, we have a couple changes in there for the state Safe Streets Initiative. Um, one of them being the assistant county investigator, one being sheriff's overtime. That comes from the city of Cumberland and their, their Safe Streets initiative. Um, we have money for the Out of School Time Coalition, Safe School Support, Federal Emergency Shelter Grant, um, little reallocation from our vacation buyback program. Um, grand total of all of these uh, amendments, $840,000 of that. 550s from existing funds, so we're just shifting funds we already had in the budget. Uh, $82,000 comes from a revised recordation tax estimate, so we're thankfully it's doing better than we anticipated. So some of the new monies that are in here come from additional revenues from recordation tax, so that, that's a good thing. Um, and then finally, the rest of it, $218,000 comes from uh, additional grant funds we're realizing. So. With that, unless there's any questions, we're just looking for your approval so we can uh, amend the budget. Commissioners, I'd like to move that we um, accept the fiscal year 2013 budget amendments. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner McKay, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item number four, ratification of new contract with city administrator. Mr. Rudd. Well, it would be for the county administrator, but that's uh, fine. Uh, what you have before you is. <laughs> so he thinks. You said city administrator. Uh, did I say city? No, I didn't know we're hiring them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, um, Mr. Everly's contract expires here in the next couple of days, so probably a good time to renew it. And um, what's being proposed is to renew his contract essentially under the same terms as before for an additional three years. Okay. Commissioners, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we ratification of the new contract for the county administrator. Is there a second? <laughs> There's a second. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> I thought Brett might be doing a retirement party. <laughs> it has been moved by Commissioner McKay, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> That's a reaction. I'm sorry. <laughs> he slipped through. There you go. Uh, Mr. County Administrator, Mr. Dave Eberly, what do we have on our consent agenda, sir? Commissioners, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, we have five items on the consent agenda here this evening. I'd like to move uh, in a perfunctory manner with at least four of them at this point in time, and that would be items number five seven, eight, and nine. I'd like to uh, uh, suspend item number six for the moment and until we have a chance to hear later on from uh, Danny Williams, who would like to speak to you on that issue. But uh, with respect to item number five, we're um, uh, seeking a procurement opportunity. We have board appointments. Uh, we have the annual request for tax abatement, which is something we do about this time each and every year for those tax accounts that are uncollectible. Uh, the final item on the agenda relates to the City of Cumberland desiring to uh, have us abate some taxes so they can uh, move ahead with the removal of some blight consistent with the Mayor's Blight Removal Prime Program. And that's a great program for the City of Cumberland. The, the Mayor has done an awesome job with that. So, um, 
Mr. Williams, would you like to comment on item number six, please, sir? Please remove your mask before speaking. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. Dan Williams, Mount Savage. Um, here tonight for the Mr. Kamoff at the fairgrounds and for the Allegheny County Fire Police because we do all the in, inside security at the fairgrounds. It came to our attention last year, and I think, Dave, you have a copy of the picture it was taken out there, uh, of a group that started out following a musical group that's out there now called the Insane Clown Mafia. They, uh, one of their trademarks is they all paint their face up white like mimes, and they go to festivities and events like this all over the place. And uh, lots of times when this group and the other one is similar to them shows up, things that aren't so nice happen at the festivities. What we requested, and uh, when I spoke to Dave yesterday, we got the language on it again, is that there is a board that when you come into the fairgrounds that has a list of all the do's and don'ts and wills and won'ts that you walk by to get onto the fairgrounds uh, for every event that's out there. You will not have backpacks, you will not have alcohol, whatever's going on with it. We ask that that uh, be added to it and it would simply state that identity disguising face paint or masks are not permitted. And uh, you guys have had it on the consent agenda and going to approve it for us. And we just really wanted to say thank you for doing it because it's going to make everybody's job a lot easier. It's going to make it easier for us and for the sheriff's people. That uh, Now, that it was written this way, so you know a lot of the churches and other groups are out there do face painting and they do little unicorns or whatever on there. That's not considered identity concealing painting. This would be. Uh, this is a big help to us. We just want to make sure we thank you for it today. And I just ask that when you do that, you send a memo to Kevin so he knows he's got something that makes it okay to put it on the sign for us. And we appreciate your help on it a lot. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Commissioners, as a point of clarification, the motion does accurately reflect the language that we're hoping to have placed on the sign, and that is the, uh, the new word is identity disguising on the, uh, the agenda this evening. Uh, we have a typographical error uh, for item number six, and we have the word identify as opposed to identity. So but the accurate phrase will be identity, identity. disguise. Okay. Gentlemen, I'd like to entertain a motion to accept our consent agenda. So move. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Valentine, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Eberly, what say you? Mr. Rabb, uh, the two items I'd like to speak with you this evening. We have uh, this week received um, bids uh, on June the 25th uh, for new roads division uh, dump trucks. And uh, we have referred those uh, bids. We actually received four of them. We referred those back to the department head for further review and consideration and hopefully awarding those at our July the 11th meeting. Uh, Mr. Dorsey's here. I'd like for him to take just a few moments, uh, he and Mr. Rudd, uh, to kind of um, opine as a follow-up to our meeting in Flintstone last week and our public hearing regarding the proposed zoning text change amendments for the G1 district. Mr. Dorsey. Hi. I'd like to address the comments that were received at last week's meeting. Uh, there were concerns raised about commercial signage, road frontage, parking and building standards, excuse me, building setbacks. And as it turns out, those things are adequately addressed by different sections in the county code that are existing, especially the commercial development standards. Do you want me to go over the change? Please, if you would. Okay. Please. Just one second. The text amendment is proposing a change in um, the regulations regarding the G1 zoning district, which is a general residential district. It is intended to add a section C under the special exceptions in that district uh, to allow certain small-scaled neighborhood commercial uses. 
that are limited to limited to grocery stores, retail stores, greenhouses and nurseries, specialty shops such, such as bakeries, barber shops and hairdressers, professional offices, restaurants, printing shops, banks, shops for sale or repair of appliances and on-site signs. Now, there is an additional paragraph or yeah, added here that wasn't included last week. It says, except for uses provided for under number three, greenhouses and nurseries, the total square footage of all buildings utilized for the uses delineated above uh, shall be limited to no more than 2,000 square feet. David, repeat that again, please. Okay. This is uh, that list of buildings, mm -hmm. uh, uh, different uses, mm -hmm. except for the one that, that involves greenhouses and nurseries. It says, the total square footage of all buildings utilized for uses delineated in subsection 2C above shall be limited to no more than 2,000 square feet. This is a result, actually, of us looking at you know, the comments that we re received. And um, as far as addressing the suggested small scale businesses, it was deemed to be a little vague. So we looked at the existing regulations as, uh, for guidance in addressing this building size problem. In particular, the code section uh, dealing with non-conforming non commercial land uses. It, it adds extra scrutiny given to such projects if the, the buildings that are being proposed for this non-conforming use are greater than 2,000 square feet. The idea is that there's uh, a commercial structure of that size may be problematic for a neighbor. A structure of less than 2,000 square feet wouldn't have as many employees within it, so we thought that was a, an additional attraction. An example uh, of a building that size, Reed is Ice and LaVale and the, the convenience store across the street from it, they, those are about 1,500 square feet structures. But to make sure, G1 is, has nothing to do with LaVale, correct? That's correct. I'm just I mean, don't, looking at the size right. of building as an example. I didn't want you to use an example of something that's not in a G1. What, what would be a G1? Can you give me? G1 district Flintstone? where? Flintstone. Parts of Flintstone, yes. West of Flintstone, the area. Um, around Old Town, although not the central part of Old Town, the Pomona Farms subdivision. They are usually subdivided areas um, where you have a, a neighborhood, but it's not like an agricultural area. Okay. So there's, there's sort of an urban uh, character to it. So city of Cumberland, no. City of Frostburg, no. On the periphery of the cities a little bit, like uh, along areas along um, outside of Zillman, if you can picture outside of Zillman, they're, they're, it's just, they're small areas. Um, okay. But there are people who have wanted to do things in the past there. Okay. But, um, and, and again, these proposals would, would be reviewed by county staff and as special exceptions, they would be uh, heard and ruled on by the Board of Zoning Appeals. So there, there, there are several layers of review there to uh, okay. look at that. Commissioners? Questions? Dave? Mm -hmm. David, thank you, and thanks to Jim Squires for his follow-up as well. And Mr. Rudd, um, I guess the next step, commissioners, uh, we can, if uh, you're in favor of us moving forward with a potential amendment, we can take formal action on July the 11th, which is your first legislative date in July. Very good. Mm -hmm. July 11th it is. Okay. Okay. Thank you too, Jackie, for the follow-up. We appreciate that. Um, city attorney, I mean, county attorney. <laughs> I have nothing further. Well, thank you very much. Commissioners, Commissioner Valentine. Oh, we should let Craig go because he's running on top. Oh, that's right. He's got, a, thank you. he's got an airport board. For that, Bill, I appreciate that. I'm um, not going to use much time tonight because everything's actually going along okay. Uh, since I'm getting ready to leave, I just want to thank these young gentlemen up front for coming tonight. It's most interesting to see you here, and I, I hope that you did learn something. So uh, 
that being said, sir, I'm off to the airport for a meeting tonight, and hopefully within a week or so we'll have some good news over there that I'll be able to report back to you on. So, Wonderful, wonderful. With, with that, I'm going to uh, skedaddle. Skedaddle. Very good. Skedaddle it is. That's an old coal mining term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Valentine. Uh, well, it's uh, been sort of a quiet week. Uh, in the future, coming up very shortly, uh, we'll be having a, another commission meeting for the group that's studying uh, Marcellus shale drilling. Uh, there has been a report now that has been uh, put up on the website for uh, public review, uh, looking at the best practices. Uh, that we've been working on for the last uh, probably seven or eight months. So anybody interested in the Marcellus Shale uh, issue can take a look at that. Um, next, our next meeting on the 11th, we'll have a gentleman here that uh, will talk about a new business that is located in the area. And uh, Mr. Everly and I were, were talking, maybe that'd be something we'd like to make a, a regular feature mm. of our meetings, you know, bring in, in anybody with any type of a new business, no matter how large or small, or, or just uh, unique people such as the artists we had at, uh, at Flintstone, people that add a lot to our, our community. So yeah, I'd like to think that that could be something that we would add to, to our regular meetings. I think that's a wonderful idea. Wonderful idea. And that uh, runs with the whole theme of what Matt Diaz was talking about with small business administration. Right. So good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Looks like we have uh, the sheriff has uh, signed up for comments. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Complain to you, Commissioner. No. Um, just an update, Commissioners. I know it's been uh, brought to my attention along with, uh, I believe you've been questioned over the past several months. Um, I was asked to present a recommendation in regards to school security involving the uh, uh, schools within Allegheny County. Uh, just to give you an update this afternoon, probably around 2.30, I finally received a, it's a rough draft from the committee that uh, I had put together. Uh, my understanding is uh, that the, the rough draft is going to be sent out to the individuals on the committee for a final review. I have a copy of it. I'm going to do a review of it and start working on my uh, uh, presentation to the commissioners along with the, the media and the, uh, the Board of Education so that we can, we can at least get this under wraps uh, on law enforcement side. Uh, understanding that I believe the county commissioner's next meeting, which would have been on 4th of July, is not going to take place, of course. Uh, I believe that maybe sometime next week, and I'll let the media know exactly, um, I'll try to maybe find a location and we'll do the hearing so we can get that out to the public and get it out to, to the commissioners and the Board of Education to uh, what the findings are from that committee. So I just wanted to update you on what was going on to keep you abreast. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you doing that. Okay, I'd like to remind everyone of our next public business meeting, which will be Thursday, July 11th, 2013, at 5 o'clock, right here in room 100. I'd like to remind everyone that our next public work session will be Thursday, July 11th, at 4 o'clock in room 212, this building. I hope that you all will see the news releases about Allegheny County government schedule concerning the 4th of July as well as the Allegheny County Fair and Ag Expo, as well as the High Voltage Power Lines Safety Training. I'd like to thank everyone for participating in your government, and we hope you have a nice day. Thank you.